Hey, what's up, guys? Today, uh, I just got done doing our online Bible study, live Bible studies that we have every Tuesday night and Thursday night. On Tuesdays, uh, we read uh, a chapter or two of the Gospels, and on Thursdays, we read a chapter or two. Uh, maybe even three depends on the letter um, of, of of the letters, right? The, the letters of the Apostle Paul or Peter. Um, so tonight we just got done reading chapter six of Matthew, and man, it was it was amazing. Like so much teaching, so much instruction, so much wisdom and warning from Jesus to us, his disciples. We have to get this, guys. So uh, Matthew chapter six, of of course, you see the title six thirty three. It says, uh, "Seek first the kingdom of God." and his righteousness, and he will give you all these things, right? He will add all these things to you. Uh, so we're going to talk about that tonight. What does it mean for God to add all these things? What is he saying? What is Jesus really saying? So what, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some scriptures in Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to talk about it because we need this clarity in this year of 220. 220, listen, guys, a lot of people have to start learning how to trust God, right, for his provision. COVID is happening. People are losing their jobs uh, or people are not getting enough hours like they used to. Uh, but there's still a, a, a command that Jesus gave us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There's no excuse, right? There's no reason to not right? To not live for God. So I want us to talk about it really quick. So let's start in verse 19. So Matthew 6, 19 says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, right? So it's obviously talking about materialistic things, physical things, natural things of this world. So good, guys. Just, just We're going to get to it. Stick around. We were talking about this during our Bible study. I had to make a YouTube video about this. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. So it's saying live your life to get a benefit, right? To get a reward, right? To get something good. In heaven, in the next life, in eternity, not for right now, right? So live being eternity minded, not current world, earth, materialistically minded, right? Verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So Jesus is saying, whatever you treasure, whatever you value, right? Whatever you consider worthy, whatever you want to acquire, that's where your heart is. The Bible says that. From the heart flows the issues of life. The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So wherever your heart is, that's where your intention, that's where your desire, that's where your, 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 your pursuit is, right? And that's where you're going to live for. So you have to be careful where your treasure is because that's where your heart will be and that's where you will live for. And to clarify it, Jesus kept on speaking about this. In verse 22, he said, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. So that's good. So if you're focusing, if you're living, if if you're if if what has your attention is good, is pure, is righteous, and of the light, then you, your body's gonna be good and healthy. Meaning you're gonna live for righteous things. You're gonna do good with your body, with your life, if what has your attention is good, is godly, right? And then it says, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Right. The Bible says to not walk in the darkness, but to walk in the light, to practice the truth. Right. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So it's a warning to watch what we treasure, to watch what our hearts are, 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 are embracing and holding on to. Be careful what you have your eye after and what you're seeking and pursuing, what you're focusing on, because that's what's going to run your life. Be careful what you're looking to and what you have your eyes on, because that's what's going to rule you and control you. And it's very serious because watch this, verse 24, it says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money, right? So it's a very serious thing. Then it, it goes on to say, 
I tell you, right? I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, or about your body, what you're going to wear. <laughs> it says, look at the birds, right? So, so Jesus is saying, don't worry about what you're going to wear, about what you're going to eat, and about what you're going to drink. Look at the birds of the sky. They don't even work. They don't even go into barns and, and gather and, 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 and go. Listen, God provides for them. God feeds them. And it says, look at the flowers of the field, the lilies. Look at them. They're dressed so beautifully, better than even Solomon. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink or what you're going to wear on your body. Because your father in heaven knows that you need these things. And if he provides for the birds and if he dresses and clothes the flowers, how much more will he do for you? That's what it's saying. That's what Jesus is saying, right? So the context of, of this is what you're eating, drinking, and clothing. So verse 30, now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So he's telling us to have faith, believe God's going to provide for you. So don't forget that. If God does it for the animals, if God does it for the flowers, he's going to do it for you. Don't be concerned. Just trust God. He will provide. He will provide for you, right? Be encouraged. Remember that. Have faith in God. Verse 31. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? That's the context. That's what God's saying to not worry about. For after all these things, the unbelievers seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. All these things. That's the key word. This is where we're going to get to. This is the message. All these things. What are all these things? It just said it. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? So now verse 633, what we're here for, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. What are all these things? We just have to go back verse, two verses and three verses. It says it over and over again. What shall we drink? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? So what is God going to add to our life as we seek his kingdom and righteousness first above all else? First, before anything else, as we prioritize him, food, clothing, and drink. That's it. The basic necessities that we literally need. He doesn't even promise a home. Like Jesus even said that he didn't have a home. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. But the son of man doesn't have nowhere to lay his head. So it's not even promising that. It's just promising food, drink, and clothing. That's, that's what we have to. We just have to believe God that he's going to provide for us the basic necessities. And aside from that, we just have to trust him, believe him, and only be focused. Don't be focused on how you're going to make money. Don't be focused on what, what you're going to bring to the house, what you're going to fill your pantry and fridge up. It just says focus on the kingdom of God. Seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness. We have to be concerned with pleasing God, with walking and living a righteous life under God right? Obeying his word. All we have to focus about is being about our father's business, right? Being kingdom minded, spiritually minded, heavenly minded, being concerned with living for God, right? And, and, and doing the works, bearing the fruit, living the way that is going to benefit us in eternity and not precisely right now. And I know this is a message that's not promoted, that's not encouraged, that's not very influential these days. It's not encouraged a lot. It's not talked about on Christian and TV a lot. Why? Because we love ourselves. We love to please our flesh. We love to live for the things of, of, of this world. We love to talk about how we can do it. We can make it. We can hustle, right? We love the motivational uh, uh, spiritual coaches, they call them, right? Because they'll tell us we can follow our dreams. We can become big business owners. We can have gigantic ministries and mega churches, and we can have three cars, and we can have a mansion. Listen, Jesus speaks completely opposite of these things that, that we're taught today. Jesus says, listen, don't even... Don't even think or worry or focus about make little minute simple things such as food, drink, and clothing. Just live for God. Just serve me. Just serve me. Why? Because you can't serve things. You can't serve the world. You can't serve yourself. You can't serve uh, money and serve me at the same time. It's just like having a wife. You can't be loyal to your wife and loyal to another woman at the same time. 
You have to be loyal either to one. You can't be loyal to two girls, to two boyfriends at the same time. One of them is going to get betrayed. One of them is going to get backstabbed. One of them is going to get disobeyed and, and you're going to be unfaithful to somebody, right? So if we're Christians, followers of Christ, that somebody for us needs to be our master, Jesus Christ, the only one who died for us, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So we can't live for the things of this world because that will automatically, by default, rule out him being our real Lord, King and Master. If we are letting things and self and money be our master, then by default, we are no longer following Jesus and allowing him to be our master and truly ruler and true ruler. Does that make sense, guys? That's why he says, you cannot serve two masters. You will either hate one and love the other, or else you will be loyal to one and despise the other. So we have to be sick and tired of living for the things of the world and just trust God for the basic necessities. And while we trust him, focus on serving him. Focus on knowing him. Focus on, on getting his, his word, his truth in our minds. Focus on bearing good fruit by the Holy Spirit's empowerment in us. Focus on being his witnesses everywhere we go and making disciples. We have to focus on living for him because we're no longer our own masters. The devil's no longer supposed to be our master. Money and the things of the world and, and lust and sex and fame, popularity, those things are not supposed to rule us anymore, right? The Bible says that we, we have dominion over sin, right? It says to use your bodily members as instruments of God to righteousness, not as instruments of sin for flesh, for self, right? So Jesus is telling us when he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he's basically saying, live for God, put God first and stop living for yourself. And in that, God will provide for your clothes, for your food and for your drink. Don't even focus on that. Don't even worry and be concerned about that and stress yourself out because if he does it for birds, if he does it for grass. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God brings rain on the just and the unjust. He makes the sun to rise and shine on the sinner and the believer. Those in covenant with God and those not in covenant with God. Those who obey God and those who don't. So how much more will he bless those who are considered the just, the righteous, in covenant with God, children of God, in Christ, the church, his body, his bride. Let's start trusting God to provide so that we don't have to spend all of our energy, all of our thought, all of our efforts, all of our time working and focusing on building our self's treasures on earth. But we can instead focus on serving God, on knowing God. There's a lot of people who say, I don't have time to show up to Bible study. I don't have time to read the word. I don't have time to pray. I don't have the, the, the strength to even fast because I work so much. Then why are you working so much? Oh, is it because you have the, 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 the best TV channels? Is it because you have the best internet? Is it because you have the newest car, the newest iPhone, the, the, the freshest clothes? If you have to work so much to pay for these things, it Basically, common sense tells you you have too many things. You're buying too many things. You are living for the things of the world and by default, not truly serving Jesus. If you don't have time to serve Jesus and know Jesus because you're always working or because you're always busy and trying to become an entrepreneur and this and that, it means you're living for yourself. Listen, guys, you need to repent. Stop loving yourself. Stop loving your flesh. Stop loving the things of this world and really turn to Jesus and follow him by allowing him to be your true master, your only master, because you can only have one. You can only have one husband. You can only have one wife. Amen. Anybody in addition to that makes you unfaithful. It makes you disobedient and makes you a slave of that person. A, 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 right. You see what I'm saying? If, if I have a king, I can't have another king. If I have a president, I can't have another president. I can't belong to two countries at the same time, to two kingdoms at the same time. Come on, guys. Let's get this in our, in, in our soul. Let's get this in our minds. And let's renew our minds with the truth of God. Matthew 6, Let's just focus on seeking God, pursuing righteousness, wanting to live righteously. That's what that means. Wanting to live according to God's word. That's what that means. Wanting to please God and serve our master according to our master standards. That's what that means, right? And in doing that, we will not be serving ourselves. So therefore, we won't live for things 
We'll just live for God and trust him to provide whatever it is that we may need because he already knows that we need it. He is our father, our God, our creator, and we have to remember he's also our provider, but we have to live for him. We cannot have two masters. Does that make sense, guys? I hope this blesses you. If it does, hit the like button. Go ahead and leave me a comment if you have a question, a comment, or concern. Go ahead and share this video with your social media friends and family, and I'll see you next time. Guys, remember, we have to grow in Christ. We have to know what his word says, amen, so that we can start living according to it and be doers of the word. Because Jesus says you can only have one master, and Jesus says that the true wise man is the man who does the word of God, not just hears it. Remember, he said the person who builds a house on sand is like the one who doesn't do the word of God, who doesn't keep the word of God, because when the winds and the waves come, he his house gets destroyed. But the person who builds his house on the rock, the house will stand even with waves and winds. Why? Because he did the word of God. If we just do what Jesus is telling us to do, we will see the victory. We will see us overcoming temptation. We, he, we will see his promises come to pass. We will see the blessings of being in Christ and under the new covenant, under grace. We will see the word of God actually come to fruition in our lives if we just obey it, if we just keep God's word, we will see how we can stand and overcome and persevere and endure and fight the good fight of faith without giving up and without giving to temptation and going back to our old ways and our old lifestyle. Listen, we have to remember we're new in Christ. So let's do what this new instruction, what this new God, our new master is telling us to do. Stop living for self. Live for him. He'll provide for you. Keep it cool. Don't worry. Amen. Let's grow. Bless you guys. I'll see you next time. Take care.